Hello and welcome. I want to introduce you in this video clip to the idea of translation. Translation, you know, so far we've gotten entity relationship diagram as an important tool in our database design toolkit. And the trouble with the diagram is, okay, you know, you say you've got this nice diagram and it's all carefully specified and you've got the constraints right. And it is a good plan for what your database is going to be. But it's not like you can just take an entity relationship diagram and cram it into a computer and expect a database to result. No, that's, that's not how things go down. What we have to do is use the entity relationship diagram as a human readable form of information. So we have to take it and turn it into something that the computer can read or that the computer maintains. So we're going from the ERD diagram to what we call a relational schema. And the reason we call it a relational schema is because we want to feel important and use fancy words. All it really is is a list of tables, their keys, and their attributes. So that's what we're trying to come up with. This, this is what we're going to get. This, and th so th this process to go from this to this is called translation. Okay, so there's th three methods we'll learn, and there's trade-offs among them. Okay, so the methods are mapped. This is the most common. And oftentimes when you're taking a database class, you'll only get one technique for translation. And if that's the case, it's typically mapped. Uh, the other is stable. And then mapped with participation consideration. Participation, as you recall, is total or partial. Okay. So these are our three techniques right here. So we got some issues. Number of tables. Stability and nulls. Okay. So these are our issues. Let's talk about the number of tables. More tables equals more joins. We haven't talked much about joins yet, but we will in a bit. Equals more math on the computer's part. And even though math obviously is something that computers can, com com can, can do very, 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 very incredibly rapidly, more tables equals more joins equals more math equals worse performance. And if you're designing a relatively small database where performance is not terribly important, that could not, you know, it's, it's easy for this to be no big deal. Sometimes it's no big deal. Sometimes it's the biggest deal in the world. If you're de dealing with something that really needs to be an honest to goodness, real time sort of a proposition, then that can be a, a, a deal breaker. If you're dealing with very large data sets and very complicated manipulations, you know, um, I once worked in, in an organization where we had a batch job that ran every day. Every day, a report was needed to be made available to a set of managers. And so if you have a daily batch job and it takes, you know, 27 hours to run, <laughs> there's only 24 hours in a day, you're going to get further and further behind. That is not acceptable performance. So more tables equals worse performance. So the number of tables for the mapped translation style is minimum. And the number of tables for stable is maximum. And the number of tables for mapped with partial trend with with partial con with participation consideration or total partial is in between. Okay. For stability, mapped unstable Stability we're talking about, is it stable over time? Suppose that the constraints in the actual problem domain change. That happens. That happens in, in, in real practice. Or, alternately, you get them wrong first crack and you realize that they were actually different than how you had represented them. Mapped, 
is not stable, it's going to th throw your relational schema off if this happens. Stable is unsurprisingly, yes, stable, that's why we call it stable, and map of total partial is also unstable. Okay, so th this favors this, stability, so number of tables minimized by map, stability obviously favors stable, and then nulls. Nulls, we will have yes for stable, we will have yes for mapped, Map of total partial consideration minimizes nulls. And why is this? Uh, we, we haven't quite got the tools to talk about this in depth, but mapped translation leads to lots of joins. Stable translation leads to even more joins. If we don't pay attention to the participation of the entities that need to be joined together, then and participation is optional the joins are going to result in many, 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 many nulls. Now, nulls are okay if you need to have them, but they are inherently undesirable. Uh, why are we unhappy about nulls? Well, first of all, it's, it, it, semantically challenging. And this, you know, this example sounds funny or, or facetious, but it's not really. You know, if gender is null, you know, that that's semantically ambiguous. Does it mean unknown? Does it mean not applicable? Or does it mean absent? Or something else? Well, it's hard to say. Plus, nulls can impact performance slightly and they just kind of proliferate if you don't design your table to avoid them in certain circumstances. So here's the bottom line in terms of considerations across these three different translation techniques. So, where things win out. Map will minimize the number of tables. Stable will remain stable no matter how your constraints change, how your participation or cardinality changes. And map with total partial consideration will minimize the number of nulls that you have and yet at the same time not provide too 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 many tables so it can be useful. We're going to go over all three and as I said the most common is mapped and if you only have the wherewithal to master one of these it probably should be mapped. Okay so in the next video we'll actually go through and engage in these translation uh, techniques and so we'll turn an ER diagram into a relational schema or a game plan for our tables. So uh, in the meantime study hard and I will see you online.